Good afternoon, and welcome to the City Club of Cleveland. My name is Jan Roller, and I am president of the club. In the last several years, immigration in the United States has surged as a hot-button political topic. We saw it in the last presidential race, and indeed, the Tea Party protesters are shifting their focus from health care to immigration as they rally against congressional legislation proposing amnesty for illegal aliens. Our speaker today, Stephen Roberts, helps shed light on the enormous contributions immigrants continue to make to the fabric and future of this country. In his new book, From Every End of This Earth, 13 Families and the New Lives They Made in America. He provides an eye-opening look at immigration in America today and captures the voices and sacrifices of those living in a new land. Mr. Roberts has been a journalist for more than 40 years, covering some of the major events of his time, from the anti-war movement and student revolts of the 60s and 70s to President Reagan's historic trip to Moscow in 1988 and 11 presidential election campaigns. He began his 25-year career at the New York Times as a research assistant to James Scotty Reston, then the paper's Washington bureau chief. He was a writer for U.S. News for seven years, specializing in national politics and foreign policy. Mr. Roberts and his wife, TV journalist Cokie Roberts, write a nationally syndicated newspaper column, and together they published From This Day Forward, an account of their marriage and other marriages in American history. He grew up in Bayonne, New Jersey, and comes from an immigrant family himself. Four years ago, he wrote his childhood memoir, My Father's Houses, which chronicled his family's journey from Bialystok, then a part of Russia, to Bayonne. Mr. Roberts is a well-known commentator on many Washington-based TV shows and appears regularly as a political analyst on the ABC radio network. He is a substitute host on NPR's Diane Rehm Show. He lectures widely on American politics and the role of the news media. For the last 17 years, he has also been a professor at George Washington University, teaching on the topics of ethics and journalism, feature writing in media, politics, and government. It's such a pleasure to have you here, Mr. Roberts. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Stephen Roberts. Well, thank you so much. I'm delighted to be back at the City Club. I was here a number of years ago, and um, it's just a pleasure to see you all, and uh, particularly those of you who came through the snow. Appreciate it. I want to thank a couple of people, including the City Club, but also some very special guests who are here that I want you to know. Um, one is a, a woman named Gail Horowitz. Where are you? Gail is, a, uh, Gail is a former student of mine and now a lawyer here in Cleveland. Uh, and uh, uh, with her proud parents there at the, uh, at the table as well. And Gail is, every year I give a prize at GW in the, honor, in the name of my parents. And Gail was the winner the year that I, uh, she graduated. So she has a very special place in my roster of alums. And I want you to know Bill Wills. Many of you know Bill from WTEM, who um, uh, runs a wonderful radio show. You mentioned the uh, ABC radio network. Uh, every Monday morning, uh, we, for many years, uh, 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 Bill has been a great pal, although I've only met him a couple. I think the last time I saw you was at the City Club, right, all those years ago. But we uh, are great pals over the radio. And I also want you to meet Asis and Priyanka Banerjee. Um, the ban uh, the Banerjee family is actually one of the 13 families profiled in this book. They are uh, here in Cleveland, and Asis is a wonderful example of an immigrant who has created jobs and businesses and economic vitality in this area. Um, and his daughter Priyanka uh, uh, was also uh, wonderfully candid and helpful in this book. I recommend their story to you. Um, and uh, really, this is just a book of stories. It's a book. Um, that had its roots in my own origins. As is mentioned, my grandparents came from Bialystok in eastern Poland and landed in Bayonne, New Jersey. Um, Bayonne is really a small version of Cleveland. Um, it's, uh, the, you know, I've been here many times as a political reporter, and um, I know all the ways to spell the word kibasa. And, <laughs> and, and I am virtually the only New York Times reporter, I think, who knew the difference between a kibasa and a cauliflower, which is one of the reasons why I, I spent so much time um, uh, in these precincts uh, as a political reporter. And um, you know, growing up in Bayonne, uh, as so many of you share this, this, uh, the, these origins will understand what I went through. Bayonne was about um, 
80% Catholic and about 19% Jewish, which is what I was. And I went off to Harvard, and I thought Protestants were a tiny minority group. I thought they were... <laughs> I thought there was some weird sect. <laughs> and I got to Harvard and I meet a man who actually achieved quite a bit of renown in his own life named C. Boyden Gray. Boyden became the counsel to the first President Bush, very esteemed man. I'd never met anybody whose last name only had four letters. <laughs> and it ended in a consonant. I mean, we'd have, that was not true in Bayonne. And not only that, he used his first initial. C. Boyden Gray? We didn't do that in Bayonne. <laughs> what? C. Vinnie Nuccio? <laughs> M. Pauli Polowski? H. Howie Berkowitz? It was not our style. And it was really weird because I had no idea that I had this waspy name. I mean, my family name is Rogowski. Uh, it's a good, you know, Russian-Polish name. It was changed twice. They left the ski at Ellis Island, and then my dad changed it when we were two. So I go off to Harvard with this waspy name, and, and uh, it's, I mean, the, it's a Welsh name. I mean, the Welsh are lovely people, but they ain't my people. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and I had, and there was a, but there was another guy in my class at Harvard named Steve Roberts, and he was a real Roberts. <laughs> and... Um, and he was a real blue blood. And in, the, in that time at Harvard, they had, there was still this vestigial group who thought they were the, my, the majority, you know, uh, who ran these very exclusive clubs that no one wanted to join, but they thought. And they would send out these invitations, and they, I kept getting these invitations that were meant for the other Steve Roberts. <laughs> and I didn't have the guts to do this. I didn't. But I fantasize with my pals that I would show up at these clubs and say, guess who's coming to dinner? Uh, Stevie Rogowski from Bayonne, New Jersey. It was not who they had in mind, I can tell you that. Uh, but uh, I have also uh, been blessed over the years to have many uh, friends from Cleveland. Uh, uh, Mark Talisman, who many of you know, was aide to Congressman Vanek for all those years. Very, we were college friends at Harvard and, and uh, remain to this day very dear friends and uh, a bunch of other Clevelanders. Uh, so uh, uh, I, uh, I'm really thrilled to be here and to talk to you about this book. Um, uh, and as I, as I did this book, I realized there were certain things about immigration that never change, that never change. Um, because uh, it's one of the most dramatic and uh, uh, experiences of human life to pick up and move to a new country. Uh, and uh, there was a woman in this book named uh, so, uh, 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 Marie Aziz, who's from Afghanistan, and I said to her, we were talking about her leaving Afghanistan, and by the way, she was thrilled to leave Afghanistan. The communists had taken over. Uh, the MiGs buzzed her house once too often. She took her three-year-old daughter and said, I'm getting out of here. And as much as she l relished the freedom in the new country and the freedom to be uh, uh, on her own in, in a new land, she said to me, read a poem written by a 13th century mystic. Uh, his name is Rumi. Some of you know his work. He wrote in Farsi. And um, he wrote a poem called The Song of the Reed. And uh, in that poem, he writes that if you pluck a reed from a reed bed and you blow through it, it makes a particularly mournful sound. That sound, Rumi wrote, is the sound of the pain of separation. The pain of separation that that reed feels from having been plucked from its bed. That, said Marie, is how I feel about leaving Afghanistan. Now, Rumi wrote in the 13th century, so there is nothing particularly new about that feeling. In fact, it's universal. There's no such thing as an immigrant family that does not feel the pain of, se uh, of separation. No matter how much you flee to a new land and how grateful you are, you leave something of yourself behind. You leave the graves of your ancestors behind. The food never tastes quite the same anywhere else. The air never smells quite the same anywhere else. 